Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John many a True Nerd, and welcome back to Dishonored. Last time we went and got Anton Sokolov from over the far side of a great big bridge. And that's a fun little quest in its own way. It's fun to, like, clamber over all the bridges. Mainly a quest about, uh, climbing all over things. But it's not the most interesting quest, because there's basically only one solution to everything. Go from door to door, and then just go and get Anton Sokolov himself. So not the best mission in the game, but equally probably I judged a little bit harshly when I was thinking about it originally. It's not a bad little mission. It's fun to clamber over that great big bridge. But today, the best mission in the game, Lady Boyle's last party. We have to go and assassinate someone. Without knowing exactly who it is, we're going to go and assassinate. Let's go and find out how we're going to do that then. Good grief, the Lord Regent's pulling out all the stops for the Boyle family. I didn't think there'd be tall boys patrolling here tonight. Watch yourself, Corvo. They don't fool around. The good news is, once you get to the party, that mask of yours will let you blend right in. Enjoy your evening out with the folk of quality. Better you than me. So we see that we've got a new enemy to take care of, the Tall Boy. We actually saw these guys at the very beginning of the game in the kind of weird outsider uh, dream thing. But this is actually the first time we've actually run into them. It's actually almost weirdly late they get introduced to the game because... This game is very easy. I will say, like, even on hard and very hard, this is a very, very easy game once you understand even the basics of the mechanics. So, all right, let's start off with having an Eluxi over here at the heart. So we've got the parties basically over there, but there's also a little bit of stuff on this side of town, albeit not very much at all. We've got one rune up there it might be nice to go and get, and one bone charm too. They're very close to each other. One rune, I think that might be under the water, over that side of town. And then we've got the boil party, that'll probably be the front door. And another bone charm right here. Well, I'll tell you what, let's start over there. Get ourselves the rune and the bone charm. Because I've still had actually, I feel like a very bad selection of bone charms right now. I feel like I've been very, very unlucky. There we go, that's double jump and then a blink to get up here. And then just keep going up. Oh, come on, come on, come on. I know you can do this. There we go. That's the right angle. So now we're on top of whatever this thing is. And if I can just get over there. Yep, that'll do. And then we've got... Oh, hello. Maybe I'm just going to knock you unconscious. There you are. You're going to be fine. Are you a weeper? Yes, you were a weeper. But that's fine. Unconscious stuff still works on you. So you're out of the way. I'll bet I have been spotted. Got myself one rune here. And it's by a shrine. So we'll get an appearance from the outsider too. Go with me. Party, Corvo. Is that what you dreamed of? All those months in Cold Ridge Prison while waiting for the executioner? Well, beautiful women in the latest fashions, laughing and drinking Tibian wine. And what of the host, Lady Boyle? I can see all her tomorrows, and I know that either she dies tonight at your hand, or she'll live out her days, month after month, year after year, far away even as her fine clothes wear into tatters and her silken hair gets dull and gray. Half the city can see the lights from the party and they dream of the delights inside. Will you tear it all to pieces? Either way, it's Lady Boyle's last party. And indeed the outsider there introducing the alternative solution for this quest. There is a way to get us snuck away from this party and out of the city entirely, but uh, Wait, what was that? Oh, hello! Oh, stop it there, you. Get away. Get get away. Get away. Go away, you. You still... You know what? You just stay on the ground for a second, please. Thank you. Dear, oh dear. Bloody weepers. Oh, there's more of them yet. You also fall over, please. There you go. And a bone charm in the very next room, too. Lovely. What have we got? There's only two bone charms in this whole area. That's actually a surprisingly small number, to be honest. Rats attack you only when you walk closer. Ah, so a resistance from rats. I've got a really bad section. There's some really powerful bone charms. I've had some terrible ones this playthrough. If I go for more of a high chaos run, this would actually be a lot better, which is things like falling stars, okay, and reinforced bolts and sustained rage. Those sync up nicely with a high chaos kill everyone style run, but uh, yeah, for what I'm doing where I want to keep it nice and subtle as far as I can, not really so good. So, we've got all of the stuff that's over here at this point. That means we've got a bone charm way over there, and then we've got the party entrance over there. You can see the tall boy over there. He's just kind of doing circuits at this point, so as long as we're careful with him, no need to worry about that. Again, just like regular soldiers, they're very bad at seeing up. 
so it's not very difficult to get around him. Boil part is brilliant, by the way. You can see that it's kind of a big raised wall. So I could get him by just going up to the front door and finding a way in just by being admitted to the party. Or well, these buildings over here provide a nice way to basically just skip up to the top of the house and sneak in that way. But once I'm inside, it doesn't matter I didn't have an invite in the first place. Everyone will just accept me as long as I don't actually start killing. And a very interesting book over here, by the way, Granny Rag's Diary. I can't trust him. You can't love what you don't trust. That's the song the birdies sing when the weather turns cold and forces them out of the nice homes they built. Nice homes spoiled. Spoiled and ruined useless now. So the birdies hate the weather that betrayed them. They fly away to look for new homes that aren't so cold and dreary, dreary, dreary. And I'm leaving too. So this used to be where Granny Rags lived, which is interesting. You can't trust him. You can't love what you don't trust, that's what the birdies sing. So, potentially, yes. Granny Rags, once upon a time, set up and lived by this here shrine. But she left it. Potentially, yes, yeah, she felt betrayed by the outsider. She turned her back on him or something. Now, next up, I believe, yes, indeed, there's a rune down in the water. That should be pretty easy to take care of, albeit maybe a little bit on the risky side. In fact, is it even worth it? Yeah, hang on. How much do I actually need a rune? How many have I got now? I've got two runes right now. I've already got Dark Vision. I could have a bit more Vitality. I've maxed out Agility. I could increase... Oh, I've got Possession 1. I don't need Possession 2. I could max out Bend Time to Stop Time, which is fun but hardly essential. So if I remember correctly, it's very inconvenient to get back out of that water. So what we'll probably do, therefore, is skip that and instead look for a way up to those buildings over there. Now, if I recall correctly, yes, you can be on top of these bridges here. I should be able to skip over from... Oh, can you not skip over from one to the other? Really you should be able to. If I go over to here, I should be able to get over to... Yep, there we go. Lovely. You can cross the bridge at the top as long as you put a double jump in first. Now, this is interesting. Sewer gate key down here. I never knew this was down here. I just kind of nipped into the water to skip round the tall boy. But yeah, there's a sewer gate around there, so I can actually get in via the sewers if I can just find the sewer gate key. I'm genuinely not sure where that is, however. And now I'm being eaten by some fish. That's okay, let's just blink away from them for a moment. Right, now I'm out of the water at least. Good, there's the nasty fish that was just eating me a second ago. Let's quickly have a look-see. Tall boy is... Wherever he is, he's nowhere near me right now. That's fine. And that'll do to get me up top here. Lovely. So now I'm back up top, far side of the tall boy, and get around the back of this here building. Right, you're over there. Yeah, guard over there. Tall boy over here. They've got long vision as well, relative to plenty of enemies. So just head over here. This is fine. Dark vision will wear off at some point. And now we can head into this building right here. Lovely. A couple more weepers. That's fine. Hello there. Why don't you come and see me? There you go. You're going to die in a second. And so are you. And so are you. And so are you. And so's the rest of you. There you go, you as well. You're all going to be unconscious. Actually, you know what? There's a few more weepers than I was expecting here. Maybe I'll just run up to the top of the building and lose them. That'll do much, much better. Yes. Right. Close the door. Loot the building. And then, yeah, maybe, maybe this was a bit of an error. One bone charm up here as well. Always good to have a bone charm. That's actually every bone charm of the level two. And a fleet fighter. Having your weapon out doesn't slow you. That seems pretty decent. Well, I've never once drunk from a faucet so far, so let's get rid of spirit water and turn on. Actually, I can have all of these on. Apparently, I'm up to six anyway, so that's fine. Ah, let's even have reinforced bolts too. Yay, reinforced bolts, sure. So, now we're up to the top of the building, of course. We are now up to a lovely high up area here. And you'll see here, of course, now we're very close by to the boil party. And as you can see there, we can get on top of this here rock. And we get on top of this here rock. And now we can just teleport down. And if we just kind of put our weapons away straight afterwards, we will be inside the party. There we go. Neutral zone reached. And we have now bypassed the door entirely. So just down here, so no one can see. Put the sword away. And we're all done. There we are. Try to blend in. Well, I don't have a sword out. Everything is fine. Now, there is a slightly unfortunate thing, of course, that if I want to use any of my powers, I have to get my sword out. Because you can't not have your sword out. Are you allowed to get on top of these here balloons, by the way? Do 
trying to remember. Uh, I'm not sure if you are. No, it doesn't look like it. That's a shame. It would have been nice to be able to climb on top of the balloons. But yes, I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to do that. So actually, if I'm allowed to get on top of here, which I am, then... Oh, yes! Yes, you are! You get... Oh, flip! Ow! Okay. That... That went worse than expected. So, you're allowed to get on top of the balloon, but if you do, it immediately bursts and then you catch fire and fall to your death. Got it. Well, it's nice to know you can do it at least. Actually, in theory, you could also, if you like, used bend time and stop time enough, you could probably get from one to the other and you might be able to get up to the very top. Which wouldn't actually achieve anything unless the devs have like hidden something super secret and awesome up there. But uh, still, nice to know. Anyway, we've got Lord Shaw right here. Let's just approach him with our sword. Oh, hello, Lord yes. Shaw. And here is a note from Lord Trevor Pendleton. Pendleton? Hmm. What's he got to say to me? Pendleton is a gutless lying sack of shit. I hope he's paying you well for this. And indeed, Pendleton has a jewel due with our uh, Lord Shaw, and he's just sent me in his bloody place. Lord Pendleton's representative will select his weapon. And I'll have... Well, apparently I don't get a choice. I, mean, I just have to have this one. Fine. So, head over here, turn away. But before we do, of course, we can actually take advantage of our powers, including bend time is quite useful on this occasion. Two. One. And at just the right moment... Slow down time, go over to a pistol, spin faster than he can, and shoot him. Nice and easy. Slow time makes this very simple. And then just pop your weapons away. Job done. I'll have his money too. Thank you. Let's just very quickly put him in the bushes. Lovely. Nice and neat. Job done. And with the little subquest done, let's head inside and figure out what we can about Lady Boyle's lovely little party. Which is apparently over there. Not over here. Could not go through here. I feel like I could just go through here, but all right, fine. The game wants me to go over there. What's over there exactly? Ah, that's the proper front door. Got it. Though, of course, we don't have to go in this way. There is, of course, as you can see, various little kind of upstairs -y areas. So heading into the upstairs area is arguably actually a lot more useful. Yeah, okay. I'll be able to get up there nice and easy. Nice. And then get up here nice and easy. Okay, so now I'm up on the second floor and ooh. There's also something over here. Hello. Oh! Well, that didn't go right. Fine. I overshot the thing and fell straight through to the ground floor. Where the heck am I right now? I'm just in some random building. Okay, fine. Just in a random building. I could have just gone in the front door. I didn't need to do the stuff I just did, but whatever. I'm glad I'm here now. Let's just explore this building. Ah! Okay, yeah, there'll be useful ways to get up to that roof so you can skip over from this building up to this top floor and not have to go through the gardens. It's just another way to enter the estate and then straight afterwards go through over here. Now you, my good man, do you need to go down? Are you going to mind me being up on that balcony by any chance? Just in case, I'm just going to go behind you and then immediately knock you. No, then knock him unconscious, please. Thank you. He'll be the only guy up here. He goes down nice and quick. Lovely. And now we can be upstairs. There we are. The mansion second floor forbidden. I don't care. Because I need to figure out which of the three Boyle sisters is my actual target. And to do that, well, we can help ourselves to some of their stuff, of course. And there's some really good loot in here. Lovely. But they've also all got like diaries and other bits and pieces that lets us figure out what's going on. Nice bit of side there. Probably don't drink too much while we're on assassination business though. That might end badly. So, first bit of literature here. Esma Boyle's diary. Let's just read that. Finally, tonight, 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 the party is going to be so fabulous, I shall bed the first man to ask for it, and the second after that, I'm so sick of these dark, awful times. Every day is as dreary as the one before. Well, not tonight. Tonight is for the living Esma. So, if we could identify which one of the Boyle sisters is the most flirty and potentially interested in being seduced, we've identified Esma, but we don't have any evidence that Esma is the target. Fine. What we can also do around here, by the way, is, although it's not, like, immediately obvious, um, all of these rooms have, like, a little ledge around the top. 
So you can skip up to the top there and then use that to open up these little doors to access like the attic space and well the equivalent of air ducts but in this particular place which is very fun. Nice little locker here which has literally nothing in it, lovely. But we can use these to skip between the rooms, thereby avoiding the corridors which are full of guards. And also getting a ton of money off those ingots and whatever, very very nice indeed. And according to the... yeah, the heart, we're getting sort of close to a room but it feels like it's not on this floor, it's definitely below. So just put that away for now. Go back over to Blink. Crack open this door, and we have indeed got another room of a different Boyle sister. Very nice. And now Waverly Boyle's diary. Esma set aside more than enough spirits for the party tonight. I shouldn't wonder if she didn't have a drink in her hand, she'd positively lose her balance. Count on me to stay sober, especially in these critical times. Would that I could escape Dunwall entirely, for I have a terrible feeling that someone might be after me. Waverly. So Waverly is paranoid and scared, and again, no evidence that she's actually the one we're looking for. Fine. What we do, however, have is her bedroom key. Very welcome. So if we need to, we can now get our way in and out of the door here very, very easily. I'm assuming you can't... No, you cannot in any way go up the chimney. That would just be too awesome if you could. So from the red bedroom, you can see we've got a nice little study here, and this gets me into this little area here. Beautiful. Close the doors behind you, remember. Make sure you don't get spotted. Uh, Rivercross reproduction. Probably don't need to be reading that, mind. Check if there's anyone in this area. Nothing huge here. Let's just skip over there to be sure we're safe. Is this going to be a painting? Yes! This is a painting we can grab here. Lovely. So that's a painting for a load of money. Cross to the other side of the building over that bridge there. Then we've got a whole bunch of stuff here. Okay, you're moving over in this direction, which means I should probably be getting out of here. And let's just get away because someone almost saw me over there. Yeah, not quite though. Beautiful. And this is, hopefully, the, yep, the final room on the far side. Fine, so the other room is on the other side here. And we can have, ah, another painting. Good, we can just help ourselves to all the flipping paintings. Close all the doors. Oh, just close the doors, don't let them get to me, it's all fine. And Lydia Boyle's diary. I'm looking forward to the party tonight despite the prospect of so many boorish men talking about their business failures. What I wouldn't give to meet a fine musician in this horrible town, someone who appreciates the harpsichord for instance and could write me a song. So Lydia is extremely keen on meeting a musician, but again we do not know that she is going to be the one who is guilty. Fine, so we still don't know exactly who it is we're after. But we do have the Dunwall Tower skeleton key here in this room, which would rather provide some compelling evidence that if someone has a significant position of authority with the Lord Regent, well, it will be the person with the Dunwall Tower skeleton key. So that puts us very much in mind that Lydia, who possesses the Dunwall Tower skeleton key, might be the one to go. And we have one more note here as well. Lydia, darling, here are the three costumes for your party. It pains me I can't be there, though I'm sure you understand why. I know you're going to look lovely in black. I've enclosed the skeleton key to the Dunwall Tower. When you visit me, no barrier will come between us. So, Lydia Boyle. Dressed in black, we now know exactly who we are going for. Perfect. And she also has the basement vault key as well, so we know who we're going for. Now, a really, really fun thing about this mission, by the way, which is the game has no problem whatsoever with you killing all three of them. If you murder all three of them, the game just says, you know what, process of elimination, you must have got the right one. Even if you had no idea which one was the right one, as long as all three of them are dead, the game is fine with that, <laughs> which is brilliant. It's just absolutely beautiful. Now, uh, we need to get back downstairs, and I would say the rat is probably going to be the best way of doing that, so let's show off possession while we're passing by. Top up my mana and go over to possession. Hello there, little rat. And then we're going to take this thing downstairs to skip downstairs. Yes, indeed. Go for that rat. I am now a rat. So now I just run into this area. I'm in here. And now I just need to find a way back out again. Down we go. Down we go. Down we go. And obviously you can see here we're skipping downstairs. Out we come. And now I'm in some form of little side room. So now I just cancel the possession, and now I've just teleported down here. But this is all very, very convenient, because I'm in what I'm pretty sure is, yes indeed, I am in the whale oil closet room. 
which means I'm in the room where a whole bunch of stuff is being powered, security door panels, wall of light circuitry, I can turn off whatever this is, so I'm pretty sure that's the wall of light I've just turned off there. Alarm circuitry, let's just rewire that, so now the alarms will not go off under any circumstances. Pick up some extra bolts, and if I wanted to I could redo the wall of light so any guards that walk through it just get immediately killed, which is great. Sadly, I can actually get back out of this room at this point because, yeah, I'd need the right key for that. So it looks like I'm going to need to take a rat back upstairs, unfortunately. But this was still a very worthwhile thing to do because now it means the alarms can't go off and the wall of light has been deactivated. Instead, go further downstairs and then back up if you can, actually. Yeah, out here. Ah, perfect. And now... Everyone just yells out impossible, but no one actually minds. Also, no one minds me having my sword out. Generally... Everyone's really cool about the whole situation. So you see there, there used to be a wall of light. The wall of light is a gift from the Lord Regent, designed to keep his good friends safe. I doubt you qualify. It's very clearly not on, but whatever. I like this place, by the way. It's very, very lovely indeed. And obviously, there's nothing to stop you wandering around with the heart, just listening to everyone's thoughts. So we've got here... Ah, this is the first the overseer who's got a music box. Basically, if there's an alert, he'll start wandering around playing that music box. And ooh, good, good flipping stamp there, my good lady. Lovely. Uh, yeah, he'll start playing his music box. And then at that point, none of your uh, powers work anymore. You can't blink, you can't slow time, you can't do any of that. Let's see what he's thinking. Even now he whispers the prayer against witchcraft. Can you hear it? Constantly whispering a prayer against witchcraft. The overseers are devout, but the magic is so. Okay, we've got a rune down in the basement. We know where the right Lady Boyle is. And nothing else around here. And just random people wandering around. We can just, like, you know, listen to secrets about all of them if we want. Waverly Boyle. She asks as if she's good for her many suitors, but the servant boys know her well enough. Ooh! Blimey, the heart's a bit of a gossip, isn't she? The youngest of the boy women. She suffers from a reckless frivolity, followed by long bouts of melancholy. The society of Dunwall know better than to make an enemy of Waverly Boyle. A favourite game of hers is to befriend a young socialite. And then see her ruined within a year. Ah, there's Lydia Boyle. Let's actually learn her secret before we decide whether we want to bother killing her or not. When she's alone, Lydia plays the harpsichord. She's one of the finest musicians in the city. You, a gentle I'll have you know I'm as gentle as I am to do in any given situation. Neither a talker nor a great beauty. She's cultivated other qualities to survive nobility. She worries about rumors. She keeps a close eye on the servants. Her servants never last long, and no one dares question her about their whereabouts. Now, fun fact, you can actually use the heart to figure out which of the sisters is actually the correct one without ever bothering to go upstairs. Because, of course, whichever one is actually the Lord Regent's mistress and is paying the army, you get the whole, she has the most secrets line about that person. And there's one other sister as well. Would you mind not being in my way? Thank you. There was the one dressed in red somewhere around here as well. There's also the beautiful banquet hall here. It is just worth paying attention to just how gorgeous this area is, by the way, because it is just absolutely lovely. And same as many other areas, if you want to, you can clamber up top on all these kind of different ledges around the room. There's not much point here because you're allowed to be here anyway, but uh, in the event that you get caught out and you have to actually start a big fight, potentially kind of fleeing at the top of the room might not be a terrible idea. Massive fish here. That's always welcome. But the pain in her back is constant. Nothing helps. Oh, I don't want to use the heart anymore. It's making me sad. And there is the final of the sisters over there in red. Hello. That is Esma Boyle. She drinks to forget herself. When there are teeth marks on her skin. Sir, I know these are dangerous times, but please put your weapons away. When her family held a dinner for so long, Esma sat with him. They spoke of many mysteries and the messages that can be read in stars. Don't be fooled if you hear laughter. No weapons in the park. Smile. Put it away, sir. There is no light in so very dear. There was trouble when her daughter was born. 
Then the doctors told her there would be no more children. In her thoughts now, the tawdry events of last night, an arrival she schemes against. There we are, some very sad things there, really. And I believe this woman here has something, a little sub-quest for her, if I recall correctly. Hello, Miss White. Would you get me a drink? I'd be so grateful. Oh, very gladly. Right, get Miss White a drink. Got it. So, cider fountain over here. Get myself one... Uh, hang on, there's already one there. So just fill up that glass. Lovely. Thank you so much. Now, how can I thank you? Are you playing Lady Boyle's guessing game? Well, I know for a fact that Waverly's in white tonight. Perhaps she's pretending to be a virgin. Additionally, Lydia's in black. And therefore, by the process of elimination, you know the remaining one is in red. So if you need to know who's wearing what colour, Miss White can tell you that as well. If you just go and get her a drink. I just love this mission. There's so much interesting stuff. The architecture and like all the stuff in the palace. It's gorgeous for one thing. The level design is beautiful. The number of little kind of sub-quests and ways that you can... Ooh, I will gladly sign the guest book, please. Yeah, I'll sign the guest book. There we go. Very nice. Corvo Attack, I've actually put my name there. I use my actual real name. Oh, that's perfect. Well bloody done me. And that leaves only one thing, which is how do we do this mission without actually killing anyone? And that is, there is one bloke in this room back here. Where are you? I know your mission tonight. We must speak privately. Of course, let's talk to Lord Brisby over here. I'm a friend of Pendleton's, and I've done a few favors for your cause. I know your purpose here tonight, and how to say this, your target is the woman I love. I swear that if you'll bring her to me unharmed, you will never hear of her again. There's a cellar directly below the kitchen. I'll wait for you there. I'm not proud of this, but surely it's better than seeing her killed. Her name is Lydia. I won't harm her, I swear. I'm a man of means. Just bring her to the cellar and I will keep her safe with me forever. So once again, just speaking to this guy can tell you which person you want to get, but can't tell you which dress colour she's in. So as a result of that, you'd need to get that information off Miss White. But between the two of them, you can actually solve the entire mystery without ever bothering to go upstairs. Now, I really, really like this way of not killing her, by the way, because it's one of the ones where, kind of like the Pendletons, but maybe even worse, you kind of feel like actually saving her is worse than killing her because basically what he'll do is after she's been knocked unconscious he'll take her away on a boat lock her in a house out in the countryside never let her leave the house and sort of hope that eventually she'll come to love him back because right now she doesn't so basically she's just going to be yeah held against her will by a weird creepy stalker kidnapper for the rest of her life and to be honest it's probably better she just go down now quickly and I'm going to make it pretty painless. So let's just quickly top up the magic as well. And now no, no, sword away, sword a flipping way. Now instead let's use the information we've got because of course we know that she is the harpsichord player and we know that either from reading the diary in her room or from just using the heart because the heart can give you the same information that's in the diary. The heart, really useful in this mission. It's very, very good indeed. Actually, you know what? Speaking of which, the crazy stalk guy, what does the heart have to say about you, I wonder? Soon the money will run out, and when it does, things will not go well for him. He is very rich and powerful. He enjoys tormenting the help. His family controls a large estate with many servants. They never shine up his shoes as much as he likes. He first saw her when he was nine. She somehow got her foot stuck in the wheel. So now we know he has a large estate full of servants that he abuses and he's rapidly running out of money. Yeah, you know what, Lydia? I think you're better off just being knifed, to be honest. Now, Lydia, let's see if we can use the information we've gleamed about you to our advantage. And I think I know your name. I know that you're Lydia. Do you? Tell me. You are most certainly Lydia. You're very clever. Now tell me yours. And maybe we could chat in the music room because we know she's into the music. Unchaperoned. Mm. You promise to behave yourself. We'll go to the music room. We have an exquisite old harpsichord. Do you play? 
It is, however, much easier to take care of her if she happens to spawn as the one who, say, is super up for having sex with a lot of people. Because if she's super up for having sex with a lot of people, then you can just lure her up to her bedroom and kill her there very, very easily. But this here... Here we are. What shall we do with ourselves? Uh, not much while there's a guard there. Any chance you're willing to, like, take me up to your bedroom by I any chance? I'm going to play the piano. Let's see if that impresses her. Oh, as it turns out, Corvo Otano has absolutely no idea how to play the harpsichord. Well, as the music room conversation didn't go very well, because it turns out I don't actually know how to play the bloody harpsichord, I'm going to see if I can go down a different route with her. Like, different sisters respond differently to different conversations. And actually, I have a message. Someone's going to meet you in the cellar. It's important you should hurry. And as long as you know her name and thus can get into a conversation with her, you can direct her down there as long as you know that there is actually someone waiting for her down that way. Now, definitely, you're not allowed down in the cellar, but as long as you're with the good lady, no one actually cares. Miss White, why are you coming down with us? You really shouldn't be coming down with us now. Do we want her to die or be saved? Die or be saved? Die or be saved? Die or be saved. Miss White, you better not be... You're going... Okay, Miss White isn't following. This is good. So Lydia Boyle heads down to the cellar. Very, very nice indeed. Things have become so much better for us since the rats came. Well, that's an unpleasant opinion. You're getting stabbed for it. There you go. Lovely. The second blow is probably a little bit unnecessary, to be honest, but whatever. Also, I've just got out the spring trap razor. I don't know why, but we just did. Lady Ball has been assassinated. And I need to pull a switch to make this door. Ah! Switch. Very convenient bloody switch. Sure. And now I'm already down in the cellars, which should provide a nice easy escape. Yes, indeed. Samuel's out here. And I've got one door this way. Beautiful. And I've already got the... Ah! This is the basement vault, in fact. Which I already got the key for. And that means I can help myself to a very big amount of money. And a room too. Nice. Yeah, um, sorry about this, by the way. I didn't actually bring her. I kind of decided that you were sufficiently creepy. The kindest thing was just to kill her now. And we've got one, ah, one unbreakable door to the sewers. This is perfect. And while I don't have the sewer gate key, I can, however, simply turn the crank. And thereby let myself out this way. Very nice. Now Samuel is saying Samuel is, oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Uh-oh, Samuel has moved. Okay, well, that's fine. Don't worry. I will just stay underwater. Sounds like an alarm is going off. But we will be fine. Yep, Samuel's moved, but barely at all. I can very easily just skim underwater past the gate. Out we come. And on our way. Nice and simple. One hostile and one civilian killed. Uh, alarms rung zero. One body was found. Still low chaos. Found two thirds of the rooms. Yeah, it was only the one that was underwater I didn't bother with. Found all the bone charms. Found the shrine. Found both of the paintings. And found a good, healthy chunk of money for once. Lovely. So Penthus hasn't bothered showing up despite the fact that I did indeed fight that duel for him. Maybe he knows I might be a little bit annoyed that he didn't forewarn me about this. So we could indeed go and debrief with Pendleton, but before we do that, let's just quickly check in with Emily too. Because I believe unless I've missed it, Emily has one more really interesting thing to say. She asks if she'll have spies. Yes, I tell her. I suppose you will. And advisors. So many advisors your head will spin. She wants a cake maker. Well, I tell her you'll have a whole kitchen staff with an army of chefs. And of course she asks if she can have cake every, every day. And I say, if that is your wish, my young empress, which always makes her giggle. Sometimes she gets so sad remembering these things. They remind her of a poor mother. It's been six months, and Emily is resilient, but sometimes I can hear her crying when she thinks I'm asleep. So just more little lovely touches from Emily as she's been at the tower here. Indeed, she's drawn another picture of the tower, but uh, in a much better shape than the real tower. The real tower's really broken. Actually, she's drawn a bit of the broken down stuff at the bottom there, except with a rainbow over it, because it's just adorable. And she's actually, uh, you can see, taken down the picture of her mother, possibly because she found it a little bit upsetting. So that's been taken down. And instead, yeah, we've just got a picture of the tower here. Hello, I am Calista, and I am Emily's teacher, and this is my lesson plan. Boring sums, boring history, boring geography, boring, boring, boring seven structures. Ugh, why can't we study sword fighting? 
and sailing and, and monsters. Emily not entirely keen on all of her education there, yes. There's one more line, I'm not sure where you get it, I can't remember, I think I may have missed it, where if you speak to Emily, she talks about how she believes the tower is haunted and she's seen the ghost herself and she describes the ghost as having dark eyes. So in other words, the outsider has presented himself to Emily, again leading really nicely into Dishonored 2. Emily is clearly interested in sword fighting and the outsider has shown himself to her. It's just all a series of very, very nice touches that do nicely introduce Emily as a potential protagonist for Dishonored 2. Very, very good indeed. I've always liked that. Anyway, back to Pendleton. Let's just have a chat with him. Hello there. You did it. And now we've done away with a woman and a noble woman at that. But Boyle was a viper. She helped the Lord Regent kill the Empress. So I don't feel a thing for her. Personally, I heard you upheld my name in a rather spectacular style and at some risk to yourself. I want to thank you for it. This little item has been helpful to my family over the generations. But I think you'll find more use for it than I ever will. Go on. Take it. You've had a long night, Corvo. But I fear it's not over. Havelock and Martin have already cooked up something more for you. They would like to see you now in Havelock's chambers above the bar. And there we are, we get ourselves yet another rune for doing that little sub-quest. So that's up to four runes at the moment, and yeah, we're running out of things to upgrade, like Devouring Swarm is basically for nothing but killing people, Wind Blast is basically just for combat, Bloodthirsty is only for combat, so pretty much I've come close to, well, I haven't maxed out everything, but the thing is, like, Dark Vision 2 I've never really seen the point of. Dark Vision 2 just doesn't seem very good, it barely adds anything. All it means is, in your Dark Vision, you can now see useful objects and security systems. Well... I'm not really sure that would be that useful at all. I give myself a tiny bit more health. I could make anyone who dies turn to ash immediately, which is fine, I guess, but not exactly spectacular. In fact, that's probably kind of one of the more useful things. Yeah, let's just get Shadow Kill 2 up. Yay. So now anyone I kill immediately turns to ash, which is lovely. In fact, let's just demonstrate that now with Lord Pendleton. And he will die and immediately disintegrate to ash. And would you believe I'm pretty sure that has slightly ruined the conspiracy? Yes. So let's not kill him. Instead, let's notice that there does appear to suddenly be a rune upstairs. So let's just very quickly check that out. Is that just a rune that's appeared in my Hello, love. bedroom? I think it is. Now, why exactly would that be up there? Whoever you are, I must thank you for sparing at least a part of my family. We all have enemies, certainly we boy or women. In a way, you've done me a favour, so you deserve a reward. I've passed this along from one of my servants through another who knows another to another of yours. May we never cross paths again. Ah! So one of the other sisters was so glad that Lydia's dead, she's actually passed me a reward as a thank you for not just killing all of them. Well, that's nice. I didn't even know that. And that then is the conclusion of everything related to Lady Boyle's last party. And I would say that is enough for now too. Next time we're going to speak to Admiral Havelock and it is time to go after the Lord Regent itself. So the end or kind of the end but not the end. We'll discuss the end next time ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And that has been to my mind the best level in the entirety of Dishonored Lady Boyle's last party. Thank you very much and goodbye. Oi! You bastard that was mostly still fine! <laughs> Stolen the bridge! All we need to do is create a counterweight over here. This is like bridge ballast. Come on! C uh oh. No. Wait. That's un. That's fine! That creaking's supposed to happen!